city staff, and park friends groups who supported this review of park permits. Over the last few years, there has been significant growth in the number of park friends groups, and I believe that this demonstrates that communities want to get involved in caring for their parks, improving them, and animating them with community events. I also think that part of the reason that there has been this growth in park friends groups is because counselors like all of you have really supported these groups, and so have park supervisors. And I really want to thank you for that support. For me, one of the most important elements of the city's five-year parks plan is the recognition of the value of community engagement in parks. I believe that one of the key ways that the city can support community engagement is through the removal of the fees that park friends groups have to pay to animate their parks with events. The fees that they pay make their work difficult and leave them feeling discouraged. Through my work in neighborhood improvement areas, I've also observed that some nonprofit organizations operate like park friends groups by supporting resident-led community park events. In such situations, I also believe that permit fees should be waived for these groups. Although this is a new idea for Toronto, it is not a new idea. We have um, researched how other, how other cities have encouraged community engagement in parks by removing permit fees, and we are basing our recommendations on a workable program in Philadelphia. We recommend that groups register annually with the city, that registered groups have access to a separate no-fee permit, and finally, we recommend that park friends groups are covered under the city's insurance. There is already very important momentum in this direction. Clean Toronto Together does not require groups to pay a permit fee, and the city's insurance policy covers participating volunteers. As well, groups are no longer requ required to pay permit fees or have insurance for stewardship events in parks. But I believe it's important to keep these groups engaged year round. It is easier to get groups to pick up litter in the spring if they had a permit free skating party on family day in winter or a pumpkin parade in the fall. We think that the value of the social connection and community health that's created by these groups for the city outweighs the less than $35,000 that we estimate the city receives in fees from these events. We know the city does not currently collect information about the work of our friends groups, but we think that a program like this would help the city collect this important data to better understand the positive impact these groups have on their parks. We hope that the city will work with us to support community engagement by removing the fees currently charged to park friends groups for the important work that they do to animate their community parks. Thank you. Terrific, thank you very much. Any questions of our uh, deputy? I guess I'll ask some. Okay, I, I, think, it, I think you do great work. Thank you very much. And I'd like, I'd like to support it, but I guess this is, um, it seems, uh, you know, like there's a lot of questions around doing this. Sure. So yesterday I went through Wilkett Creek Park. Yes. And bicycled through Sunny Park Park. Okay. And, um, you know, I saw a lot of park users, varying themes and types, and some people who were there at like, you know, 8.30 in the morning, staking their spots. And, and so I'm just wondering how this impacts all those other users. Like, how do we level the playing field, or how do we make it fair for the, you know, the church group that has a, uh, a picnic, you know, their Sunday school picnic, or the, yesterday I was um, actually at uh, in this uh, kicking off the Huntington disease society's events in Wilkin Creek Park and they, they paid a fee and that, that's a really devastating disease that affects many families and um, 
you know, they were using the front for a walk run to raise some money. So how does how does this uh, gesture affect those other users? I'm just what, or what are your thoughts around that? I think it's a great question. And I, and I think that for us, what is key is that a park friends group has to be working on behalf of the whole park. It needs to be a transparent organization that represents people with different points of view. And we believe that um, park friends groups need to have a relationship with their counselor and their park supervisor to guarantee that they have this open, inclusive, whole park thinking kind of mentality to their group, rather than a specific, special interest in how they use the park. We also, we, we're also suggesting that groups renew their registration on an annual basis, and that their kind of inclusive, whole park thinking perspective comes up for review and that both the counselor and the park supervisor can comment on whether or not this is an open and inclusive group that's working on behalf of the whole park. Okay. Can you remind me if the city provides any funding to your organization? I'm just trying to remember. Are you guys completely independent or is there... Um, we have funding from Live Green. Um, Green. Yeah. I think that's it. Okay. Just because I couldn't remember if you if you've got it. And then, and then, so if you, if we did this, would this broaden your, as your mandate, um, do you feel, as an organization? How would it impact your organization on this? Because this is quite a big... Sure. Well, I mean, we very much want to work with the city, you know, specifically the Parks Department and the local councillors to support community engagement, to allow parks to become vital community green space and you know we would partner with you as you see fit really to you know allow groups to animate their parks in a way that benefits the local communities you know to the to the best of the community's ability. Does that answer your question? Yeah, you know, that's excellent. Okay. Thank you. Those are all great answers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Burks. Thank you. I'm, I'm just trying to recall. Uh, most of your money isn't from Live, Live Green, though. Most of the money comes from a private foundation. I'm just trying to recall. So, um, in terms of our specific funding, we have some funding from the Metcalf Foundation, from uh, Live Green. But the, the, the money that Friends Up groups use to, to do it. Uh, do events? events and, so, uh, no, events and investments in parks. I'm trying to recall where all that comes from. I can't remember. So, so, okay, so we administer a program called the Western Family Parks Challenge, yes. but that doesn't really, in my opinion, that doesn't really relate to this. Like we, the, we do a program called Parks 44, which is to create a park group in every ward in Toronto, yes. but the amount of money that we're talking about, um, that groups use to do events in parks, like, I mean, they're they're spending you know maybe five hundred dollars, a maximum of a thousand dollars you know to do like three park events per year, right. and West Family Parks Challenge is like a twenty five thousand dollar grant minimum. So I'm not sure. Oh okay. That right. applies. No, or I understand. So you're saying that the the cost of permitting the parks is so small that you don't use the Weston money, which is only for expensive. Well, the, yeah, the, I think the Weston money is like more yeah, for big park improvements. Does that make sense? Okay. This is this is very small scale. We're talking very small expenditures here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pasternak. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you for coming in. You've done amazing work uh, in Ward Ten, uh, particularly in in Earl Bales, uh, as we as we build capacity there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got, uh, we've got all the emails here, and what you seem to be asking for is the waiving of fees uh, by park friends groups and non-profit community groups. Is that? Yes, that's, that's accurate. That's now, um, I'm just, you know, everyone likes a low cost entry and, and it's great for parks, but is there a concern that, that when you um, start whittling away at the revenue, that goes into reserve funds for repairs and cleanup. 
camps and, and offset solid waste and, and community safety issues that keeps our parks in pretty good shape that, that will come from somewhere else and that, and that we'll see a deterioration uh, of, our, of our parks. Is that, is that a concern uh, that's been raised uh, among yeah. your group? I mean, we thought, you know, honestly, we thought about that a lot. And I guess, you know, in our opinion, the value and the return that communities receive and ultimately the city receives from a vibrant community park is so high, in our opinion, that the $35,000 that we estimate it would cost to let these groups have these permit-free events. In our opinion, it's, it's a very smart investment because you know, a vibrant community park is a safer park. It you know, becomes a kind of, a new immigrant community, it becomes a gateway for people to sort of you know, meet their neighbors. And um, I, I feel that you know, if the city were to, you know, to keep track of the data of what happens when you have a vibrant community park, I believe you would find it's worth your investment. Yeah, I think that to the people on this committee, uh, and as one of the veterans uh, on the committee from December of 2010, and who was responsible for a ward where parks are a vital part of day-to-day -day life, that there's no doubt that that access to, you don't want to create barriers to access, and you want to make sure that everyone can enjoy the park. Now, according to staff, we're bringing about, it's about $4 million a year in, in park permits. Now, they, they haven't broken it down to profit and non-profit, but we'll, we'll, when we get to questions that. So that, generally speaking, those funds would be forgiven, those. Well, I think it's, I think the, we're specifically talking about nonprofit groups that act like park friends groups. And what I mean by that is that they wouldn't, you know, have a, a permit waived for a one-time event commitment, but rather a group like an Action for Neighborhood Change that has an ongoing commitment to a group of residents who are doing multiple, you know, seasonal events year-round. I think to me, that is a type of group that would qualify to receive that kind of park friend status, which, which would allow a permit fee to be waived. Does that help respond to your question, or do you need more clarification? No, that's, that's fine. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Councillor Bassett. Councillor Doucette? So, a quick question. Do you think there should be a limit on the number of permits a group could get so that one group doesn't manipulate or something? Sure. Uh, dominate the park? Um, sure. I guess one of my concerns is if, do you, would you agree that if, I mean, I have no problem with no permit fee, but would you agree that if someone isn't paying a permit fee, they may take all the prime spots all the time for the bake oven and not let any other new groups come in? So, would you agree we have to be considerate of that and maybe have a, a maximum per year or look at it every four months, three months, whatever? Well, I think my general response is, you know, I would be open to that. I think um, what we found is, I guess, two things. It takes a lot of energy for volunteers to organize a community park event. So the idea that they're going to be doing this every week it is just not accurate that it's just two, this, these are volunteers they don't have this kind of time so if if we get a spring summer winter event out of a volunteer group in my mind that's a fantastic achievement so i don't think you're gonna have this waterfall request for permits and then the other thing i would say as well is that we're asking groups to re-register annually so there's always this opportunity to review the practices of the group Decide if they if they warrant this status. Thank you. Thank you. I just had a couple of questions. Um, so there are all these obstacles that seem to be coming out for groups that want to do something for the greater good of the community. Can you rank them for us? Like, what's the what's the biggest obstacle? Is it the permit? The way you know it's it's not friendly. It's not. 
um, will be accessible online? Is it the insurance or is it the permit fee? I get, like it's all three, I know, I'm hearing. So how would you rank it? Like, would be the best one to Okay, so I'll comment on that and then I'll ask my colleague Jake to comment as well. So in my opinion, the, the biggest obstacle is the permit fee, the second would be the insurance fee, and the third would be the complexity of the permit process. So if, if it's possible to have a kind of online portal, one page permits, or if groups register, Anything to make this process easier would be a great value. Jake, do you want to comment? Uh, I would agree with Anna. The, the comments we received back from our friends groups is that the cost of the permits is the, is the number one barrier here. Okay. And uh, my last question. So you quoted thirty-five thousand dollars. Is what? How do you get that figure? I'll turn this over to Jake. So we looked at the average number of events that we see park groups holding per year, and then we looked at permit costs as well. We calculated kind of the maximum that we thought the city would receive from these events. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for all the great work you do. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And next up we have.